Hi brothers and sisters, welcome to my channel. It's Linda Peace, your sister in Christ, and I. It's an honor to be here and have a word with you. I want to thank you who are participating in the fasting. And for you, if it is your first time to be on my channel, I'm Linda Peace, a servant of the Lord. And I want to say to you that we are in our fasting that we always do each and every end of every month we do this so if this is an interest to you you want to be stocked in the Lord you are welcome to join our fasting for five days and this is our third day we started on Tuesday and we're going for five days so you're welcome to join in our fasting and uh, May the Lord bless you. Peace be upon you all. And I hope that you are all doing well. Um, so, brothers and sisters, I do not come here with a joyful spirit. I am not happy with, with what is going on. In our fasting, when you are praying, not any of you are praying wholeheartedly. I am not going to lead people who are not offering the full worship to God. I'm not going to lead people who are not ready to honor God. It is already 2 a.m. This side. Before I could start talking to God, He said to me, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, They've easily forgotten from where I got them. They have easily forgotten from where I have got them. But if they remembered, if they remembered, if they remembered, if any of them remembered, if you remember that moment where the Lord got you, when nobody was there for you, when your family was not there for you, when your friends were not there for you, when your partner was not there for you, when you yourself could not think what was the next move for you yourself. And that fire, when nobody wanted to stand there with you, if you remembered, if you remembered, if you remembered so keenly, so carefully, if you thought of all those things, if you thought of how way that sin could take you, how many people are astray, are wicked, and what disaster comes for the people, if you remembered very carefully and see where the Lord took you out of, then you could come to Him wholeheartedly. And what is wholeheartedly? In your worship, you have to lift your hands up for the Lord. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is complaining about. That none of you is praying Him wholeheartedly. Your hearts are very far. He says your hearts are very far. Do not do something because you're asked to do it, but do it because it's coming from the bottom of your heart. Let's walk along with the Lord. You know very well that in the Bible, He has taught us. The Spirit of the Lord has taught us through Paul, and He has commanded us through Paul that you brothers and sisters, now I want you when you're in worship, you should rise, raise your hands up in the sky. 
in your worship, raise your hands up. Give God the honor. Worship him with your hands up. Give him honor. He's a big man. He's a big man. He says, none of you is thinking of where he has got you. If you thought of those moments, if you thought of the witchcraft that was done behind your back without you knowing, the plans, the plots that were done behind your back without you knowing, but he protected you. He saved you from accident. He saved you from a sickness. He healed you. He provided for you. But you've forgotten all these things. You forgot all these things. And in prayer, you just say, God, I want, I thank you for the day of today. I thank you for the Father. I thank you for this and I bless your name. Amen. That's all. You spend two minutes before the Lord. I am not going to lead people that are not ready for this. I'm not going to do that. There is nothing that will be hidden from me. Because I, if I have come as a servant of the Lord, if I have come as one that is just being put there like a phone to speak, Then he can tell me everything of how his house is doing. Because I'm heading the house. And it's just the same as you see other servants as well. If you're doing well, he tells me they're doing well. They're doing like this. They're doing like that. There's nothing that can hide from me. Because he's the one who watches. It is his thing. Why are we doing this to God? Why do we do this to the Lord? You, you know very well that without righteousness, we cannot please Him. Without righteousness, He cannot do anything. Faith comes from righteousness. Faith comes from righteousness righteousness comes from faith those two go alone and righteousness is deeds your deeds you cannot just say I am righteous without faith you cannot just say you have faith without righteousness and that is deeds you're gonna have to prove yourself of how righteous are you of how much faith you have by exercising your faith exercising your faith you got something inside you know I can do this I can do it and they go do it I can do it. You have the word. You have the word in you. You have the faith. You have the word in you. I can climb this tree. I can climb this tree. Do you just end up saying, I can climb this tree? Or you go forward and you do it. That is faith with deeds. That results into righteousness. Faith with deeds. When you receive Jesus Christ, when you confess, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not already righteous. You just received the faith. You just received the faith. I can climb that tree. You just received that faith. You received the strength. I can climb that tree. That's how you see it's written in Christ, in Christ, I can do all things. You just received the faith. Now you're going to have to go up. You're going to have to climb up. 
You're going to have to exercise your righteousness. You have to exercise your righteousness. You just received that faith. I can overcome lust. I can overcome lust. I can overcome pride. Because I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. I can resist an adulterous woman. An adulterous man. I can resist all this. Because I got the faith. The faith I got in Christ. Faith without deeds is empty. You receiving Jesus Christ and just sitting, not exercising your righteousness, it's empty. You will go to hell for that. You will go to hell. You're going to have to apply your deeds as well. And when you apply your deeds, then you'll be declared a righteous person. Because now you apply your deeds, I can overcome last. Then you go forward, you go for it. You look, there's a woman passing you turn around. No, I don't want to look at that. It does not please God at all. You have the faith in me. I can overcome it by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of the Lord. This is something he taught, he, he, he was supposed to be t teaching me yesterday. And I wanted to come here and release this word to you. But I couldn't pray for long. I could not pray for long. And I don't want to be emotional in this. Because I felt, I, I felt the, 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 the way the Lord is watching us, we pray. I felt how He sees us in our fastings, the way we walk, the way we talk. The way we bounce around. We say we are Christians, but we're bouncing around. We bounce around. He's, he's sitting on the throne doing nothing, but just looking at you. Looking at you. How you shouting at your wife in your house. How you shout at your, at, at your, at your woman. You, at, uh, at your, at your uh, husband in the house. How you shout at your children. How your visitors come to you and you do not give them anything, but you send them empty-handed. You don't even give them food or a cup of water. But you say you're righteous. You say you're righteous. Was our father Abraham not declared righteous when he applied his faith by sacrificing the only son that was given to him? Because he knows there was a word that was given to me. There was faith that was given to me. He had faith. And the faith that was given to him by God, that you will be the father of all nations. That is the faith that was given to Abraham. And because he believed, he was declared righteous. Then you're going to also have to believe that faith that was given to you. To believe in Jesus Christ. Abraham believed in God, in God's promise, in God's word, in God's faith. 
when we talk about faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing the good, the good gospel, the good word. It's written. Go read the Bible, you find it. You know, Linda does not, that does not cram scriptures for you. But I want you all to be people who love to read the word of God. When I say something, go check in the Bible. Go check in the Bible for your souls. This is how I also grew. I don't easily just listen. I go taste in the word. I spent most of the time reading the word of God. Now when we had that, that gospel, that good news, that is where we got our faith. And we're gonna have to believe that good news. Then we put it into action. When we put it into action, that we can be declared righteous. You have to put it into action. You punch your body. Those are your deeds. You punch your body, you deny what your body is looking for. I want you all to get into your worship and your hands should be rise up your heads and say, Father, may you forgive me for being very far away from you in my worship. You come before God, but you're still thinking of something else. You say, but Linda, how is it possible that I do not think of that thing, but I just think about God when I'm in worship? Why do you not think about the cross? Why do you not think of the cross? Have you not read? And then how much suffering he went through. We have lovers in our lives. We get into problems. But when the problem is that they don't want to stay there, they want to move away. Because they, they see, they can't, they can't deal with it. They only come later when everything is sorted, when everything is done. Then they say, hey, how are you? I'm so sorry I work away because like this, like, they give excuses. But look at Jesus Christ. Where even his disciple denied him. But he was still faithful. He was taken before officials. But he said no word, no word to cancel the agreement that was done before him, between him and God, to save you and me. The agreement was to save you and me. To save you and me. That agreement was between him and God. Because the old covenant was not working out. The sacrifice of blood, of, of animal blood, was not working out. People could die before the time of repentance. A priest went in the tabernacle once in a year to repent of the sins of all the people. How many people are dying before that day? Just one day, one day in the year. How many, how many sins are you committing in a day? Just in just an hour. In just a day, how many sins do you commit? How many sins? What about in two days? What about in three days? What about in a week? What about in a month? What if the sacrifice was in April? What if it was in April? Just one day in April. If we say that maybe somebody could die that very day, that the priest made the, sub, the, the sacrifice, you could go maybe to heaven. But most of the people, every day, 
there is something you're doing. Every day we're doing things that that, that, that the Lord is not pleased about. Do you see how the old covenant was not working out? What about a person gets sick before that day, before that month of repentance? If it's done in April, how many months are left again to come back to April? Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see? Do you see how much God thought of people? How much God thought of people. And when he died for the three nights, for the three days and three nights, he went to hell and he preached the gospel there as well. You can think of it. Why did he go there and preach for those three days and three nights? Because most of the people, most of the people, when they died, they went to hell. They went to hell because that uh, that covenant was not working out it was not working out now if he went down there and he preached you think of it if he took the keys of hell how many people were left down there? How many people were left down there? After he left, after he preached, how many people? Who would want to stay in that fire? After hearing this good news, who would want to stay there? Do you not see what the Lord has done for the world? Do you not see these things? He took the keys. From Satan. He took the keys. Don't you see that now Satan is, is, is coming out for you? Because hell was emptied. It was emptied. He emptied hell. He took the keys. He saved those that, was, that were in hell. He saved them. He took the good news there as well. Now who would say no? I do not want to get out of here in this fire. Who would say no? Can you not see how precious the Lord is? Can you not see? Can you not think of these things? Think of these things. Get before the Lord with lots of joy and bless the Lord of what he has done for the world. The gospel has reached everywhere, every corner in this world. It is everywhere. Even under the earth, it is there. It is there everywhere. For he would not just come and not fulfill. His purpose. But he had to do it and finish it before he could leave. He don't just easily run away like the people we have in our lives. He makes sure that everything is done. And in that way, he does not just easily leave, but he, he leaves an extra help. He left the advocate there for us, the Holy Spirit there for us. Do you not see how precious the Lord has thought of us? Have you not seen? Do you not think of these things? How then do you want to think of what am I going to eat after the fasting? What am I going to, uh, 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 to do tomorrow? Uh, how am I dressing tomorrow? You're in fasting but you're going out for shopping. You're thinking of what do I, what do I eat after this, 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 this fasting? Oh, I miss this. So you, you're doing like this and you're slandering. You're an envy. At the same time, you say you're fasting. Pride. You say you're fasting. You hate that person. You say you're fasting. 
Somebody asks from you, you say, come back later. Oh, I do not have, but you do have it. You don't want to give. I have testified to you. I have said to you that I did not know that it pleases God to help a person that is in need out there while in your fasting. When you have, I did not know that. After I did that, after prepared meals for people out there for months and months, while I kept on my fasting, my fasting, he later revealed to me in the, book, in, his, in the Bible, in his word, the fasting that pleases him. He showed me this. He said, this is why I wanted you to do this. Because this is a fasting that pleases me. So when you have time, when you have that opportunity, do it. When you have the resources, do it. In your prayer, raise your hands up. Thank you for saving the world. Honor him. Do not be too. Do, do not be so far, so quick to leave the presence of God. He's a big man. Honor him, brothers and sisters. I beg you. I have never seen God. But I have had, I have had encounters with him. I've never seen God. I've never seen Jesus Christ. But I have known the Lord. And I tell you, please honor God. Honor Jesus Christ. He's a big man. I have seen his light. I have seen his power. I've experienced it. It has been alive to me. It has been alive to me. I have seen his light. But I have not seen his face. But I've read in the word of how it looks like. Let's honor God. I don't want to get emotional here. Let's honor God. Honor God. Let not your wash, let, let not your fasting be in vain. Honor God. He's a big man. Let not your circumstances, let not your problems be a hindrance for you. In worshiping God, in coming to coming to God wholeheartedly. I've testified to you many things. About the deliverance of God in my life. That should be way too enough for you. To let go of everything that bothers you. And come and talk to God about it. From Him all these things come. All these problems we have in the world. They come from Him. It is Him that lets it happen. And to the wicked. He is not there. So the problems just keep running to them. But if we are centered in Him, all things work out good, for good, for us. But He Himself knows. He knows what trouble comes for those that are rebellious before Him. There will always be trouble for those that disobey, disobey me. And he mentions these kinds of troubles. This, there is no trouble that has come on this world without the concert of God. He knows everything. 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 So if we know that in the beginning there was a word, and the word was, was good, in the, there was just one word. Just one word. Nothing else. Just one word. There was no earth, there was no uh, uh, sickness, there was no blindness, there was no dominance, there was no poverty, there was no richness, there was no women, there was no man, there was no pride, there was no hatred, there was no anger, there was I'm hungry, there was no ulcers, I am sick, I cannot give birth, I cannot do this, 
There was nothing like this, but there's just one word. That's what the Bible says. There was just one word. Just one word. Just one word like this. So think of this one word and see your circumstances say, in your one word, this circumstance, this, this circumstance has come from you. Now I pray to you that you take the circumstance away from me. Let me seek you one word. Let me seek you. Call him Father. Call him Father. Raise your hands up and worship for him. Honor God. Honor him. Let us be the children that he is looking for. The children that please his heart. The children that he can look down as he's sitting on his throne and he said yes. He says yes. And these children have believed. They believed. My good news. They have honored the time I took to come down there and save the world. They have understood me. They've understood that I am God. That I am the savior of the world. Then in that way, he can deal with our problems. Apply deeds in your faith. Apply deeds into your faith. And with believing on top of it. Believe you can do it. The faith is, I can climb that tree. I can climb that tree. Okay, you got the faith. Now believe you can do it. Take the first step. Go. 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 Even when you fail on the first day, second day, one week, two weeks, one month, do not give up. Keep on going. Keep your eyes focused. You have that scene that is not moving. Keep your eyes focused. Try to resist it. As you keep on praying, Father, help me. Because I know this, you detest. You do not like this. And you go. You have the faith in you. I can do it. The faith in you. Jesus has saved me. Jesus has brought the salvation to me. And I can do it. I can do it. Then go forward. Turn your eyes away. Turn your ears away. Switch off your TV. Do not go to those clubs. Somebody sends you a message, let's go for a movie. No, thank you. This is your deeds. These are your deeds. The Lord has saved you. You on your bed, on that bed, you've been bedridden for over years, months, and stand up and walk. By his stripes, I am healed. That is the faith we received. By his stripes, I am healed. Stand up, walk. Stand up, walk. Every knee shall bow before the name of the Lord, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Sickness is a name. Anxiety is a name. Poverty is a name. Depth is a name. Whatever the situation is, whatsoever it is, whatever it is, it is just there for a moment. And in fact, the package is already prepared for you. The answer is already prepared for you. It's just there waiting for you. The much time you take in doing other things other than seeking God, the longer it takes for you to get your breakthrough. The longer it takes for you to get your breakthrough. That's why you see he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first him. Seek him first. It is just there waiting for you. When you seek the Lord, he breaks all those 
this, those chains, those hindrances that are before you, he breaks them. And then thus your breakthrough, whatever you need, will just come flourishing. Whatever you need, will just come. You just keep on seeking him. You just keep on seeking him. You just keep on. And he just gives you. You just ask, Lord, this is it. In your righteousness. He can do all things for you. All right, guys. May the Lord bless you. And get back to the Lord. How, do, how does the Lord expect you to get back to him? So, Father, see, now I have come. And I've realized that in my worship, I haven't been pleasing you. It hasn't been pleasing you. My heart has been very far away. But I come to you, Father, before I may pray. Before I may pray. May you hope open the heavens. Receive my prayer and my worship. May you look on me, Father. Let me feel you look at me. Say this to God. Let me feel you look at me. So that I may be fully inspired to stay before you, before your presence for long. For this is what I'm looking for. And this is what pleases you. Say these kinds of prayers to God. Let me feel you look down on me, Father. Let me feel you look down on me. Don't say it once. It will not be more than three days before he does it. Don't say it once. Say it like you want it. Do you want to have an account with God? Do you want it? You cannot just be a, just a Christian as everybody. You have to have something. You have to have something with the Lord. Feel something with the Lord. Feel something. We have different encounters with God. You cannot just walk as a blind person. Your pastor just... Just, just say, they give you daily devotions and that, oh, you do not have any, you do not know how it feels like to, to be in the presence of God. You do not know how it feels like for, for, for the Lord to speak to you. You do not know how it feels like. You, you've never experienced this. You've never. You only experience that good feeling when you just, when you just in church. That's all. That's all. You haven't had an encounter with God. You even do not know what spirits your, your pastors are using in church. You don't know. You, you do not have an account. He said, I shall not leave you as orphans, but I shall send an advocate that will live with you and remind you of my teaching. He didn't say, I will send you pastors. He said, do not call anybody here on earth teacher. Do not call them teacher. Do not call them any. Don't call anybody. He gave a command. He gave a command. Do not call anybody teacher. Do not call anybody father. For you have one father in heaven. For you have one teacher. He gave a command. And this command will still stand there on that day of judgment. He will say, you didn't believe in me. But you believed in your pastors. You didn't believe in me. But you believed in your prophets. He said, he gave a command, do not, do not. He said, do not. In the Bible, there are very many commands besides the Ten Commandments. There are many commands that the Lord has commanded us. He said, do not fear. Do not fear, but trust in God. Trust also in me. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Do not call anybody father here on earth. Don't call anybody. Don't call anybody teacher. But you have one teacher. One teacher. You know who is a teacher? The one who will teach you about everything. The one who will lecture you about everything. That is a teacher. He said, don't do this. 
Don't do it now. Do like this. Do like. That's a teacher. He said, don't call anybody. Most of you are saying, this is my spiritual father. This is my... What is that? Spiritual, what can he do? What? Where? What can he do? What can he do to your spirit? What can he do? What can he see? Can he see the trouble that is coming? What can he see? What can he see? Does he see how your spiritual life is standing? Does he see you're increasing or declining? Does he see? You said, this is my spiritual father. That's what most of you say. This is my spiritual father. He said, do not. It is a command. It's a command. He commanded. He said, do not call anybody on, on earth, on this earth. Teacher, you have one teacher. Do not call anybody on this earth. Father, you have one father in heaven. One father. And how do you connect to this father? I shall send you an advocate. Somebody that will connect you to him. Somebody that will remind you of the teachings. Will tell you don't do that. This. Don't do like that. Now don't go there. Now read here. This is what the father is saying. This is, I will tell you myself. He will tell you himself what I myself am saying. He, when he comes, he will not testify by himself. That's what he said. He will not testify by himself. But he will only speak what will come from me. What I will give. He will listen. He will only speak what I will give to him. Meaning it's coming from above. He will live with you. He said when he, he will live with you. He will live with you. He will live. In everyday life, he will be with you and remind you of my teaching. Where is this teaching? In the Bible. Go there, read. How can you forget? How can you easily just forget? You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have a relationship with God. You have set aside all these promises of God. You've set all this aside. Now you folks, they give you daily devotions. They have replaced these this small books with the, the replaced the Bible with these daily devotions that they give to you. In other words, you do not have the Spirit of God living in you. But you lie to yourself. They lie to you that the Spirit of God lives with you. Who lies to you? Do you not know that when you read the Bible, when you read the Word of God, you, have, you get the Spirit of the Lord leaving you? Do you not know that? That's how you generate the power of God in you. Do you not know that? Do you not know that? I have seen these daily devotion books. And how people get so lazy to read the Bible. They only read, read these books. In fact, they can even say to you, I, take, I took my daily devotion and I was going somewhere and I was almost being knocked. But because I had my daily devotion in my, in my, in my, 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 my pocket, I was not bound. What is that? Is it the book now protecting you? Or it is God now to protect you? What is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? Are you yourselves too foolish to see these things? Do you not know that it is God that protects? How can a book protect you? What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Can you not see the deception that is before you? I bring another warning I have warned before and I bring it again if you are listening to me and you're from Christ Embassy Church I warn again I warn again I have warned before and I warn again I warn again by the Spirit of the Lord what the Lord what the Spirit of the Lord say to me that everybody everyone in this church is doomed for destruction. I 
I won again. That time when the Lord revealed to me what is going on in that church. What powers are used in that church. What is behind the lead of that church. When he revealed to me this. And I mourned to God. I mourned. I wept for my brothers and sisters that are too blind to see. Because I was also part of this. I was also blinded. But my spirit kept crying out. This is not you. You cannot dress like this. You cannot be like this. You cannot talk like this. You cannot listen to this music. You cannot. This is not you. And I asked God. I asked, I asked Jesus Christ. I said, Lord, what is, why do I feel like this? But I hear they say, it's okay. You can dress. You can wear pants. You can put on makeup. You can wear wigs. They say, God checks the heart. He said, no, I don't check the heart. I am a righteous. I'm a holy God. You're going to be holy. If you want to come to me, you're going to be holy. You're going to get yourself out of that. I said, but Father, I've tried. I can't do it. I can't do it by myself. I can't get out myself. He said, okay, I'll do it. And he did it at once. Just at once. Just at once. When they came tracking for me, and I still ran to him, I said, Father, what do I now say? What do I now say to them? See, they have come for me. You yourself took me out. He said, still, I will do it for you. And he blocked them. A true Christian, why would you block a fellow brother or sister? Why do you block them? Is it not your responsibility to see that they're doing fine? Do you not go and check on them? Do you not go? But see how these people blocked me. Why did they block me? Because their services are in vain. Their hearts are not after saving people. They do not know what is, what is precious before God. They do not know what it means like to save a soul from hell. They do not know what it means like to God. They just after filling their churches. I warn you again, if you're listening to me, I warn you again. Before the day, the, the, your leader, your leader will be successful until the return of the Lord. That's what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. I am nothing. I am so young, very young. I'm nothing. I have nothing. I'm nothing. I'm a sinner like anybody. I'm nothing. I do not exalt myself by saying things that are out of space. I don't. I gain nothing of this. But I know that if I can say this to you, I can gain your soul. It's not to benefit me, not me. You yourself taste the Lord. You yourself taste the Lord. Come out yourself. Take that Bible, put those books aside. Take that Bible, declare a fasting by your own. In this church, they only fast at once. I, I, I've, I've seen that. Only when they're about to have the, their, their communion. I've seen this. And where it's not a sincere fasting. You cannot wear pants and please God. Your body is the temple of Christ. You cannot wear makeup and please God. Your, your body is a temple of Christ. You can't. You can't have long nails like a demon. No. No. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Yes, God checks the heart, but he says, be ye holy, for I am a holy God. The temple in the old covenant was covered three times. It was covered three times. Before you could get on the, to the most holy of the holies, it was covered three times. You go through the first curtain, the second one, and then the third one. This is where you could find the Lord. It's where you could find 
is where the prince could communicate. It's where the presence of God was on the third, third curtain. The third covering. That was the temple of God. That was the temple. That's how the temple of God was covered in the old covenant. But now in the new covenant, as of now, he says, your, your bodies are my temple. He said, your bodies are my temple. He said, your bodies, your bodies are my temple. He said, your bodies. He didn't say your house. He did not say your house. He did not say the church. He did not say the church. He didn't say the church. He didn't say that. He said, your body, your body. So if in the old covenant, testament, it was covered three times. What about our bodies? How are we supposed to cover it? Should we walk around showing our cleavage? Is this how we cover our, our, our offer? Is this how we offer our bodies to the Lord? Is this how we honor the temple of God? Nobody could enter in the, in the tabernacle except the priest. Except their priest. Read your Bible. You do not read your Bible because you're being blinded by those, those rhapsodies of reality. Those rhapsodies of reality. They've hindered many people from reading the Bible. After reading, they said, no, this is enough for the day. This man of God is leading us. He will lead us into eternity. They have forgotten that the Holy Spirit is the one that is there. To do it. They say, no, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. I am so sorry for you. Very, very sorry. Because you seek God because of man. But you don't seek God because of Jesus Christ. I am so sorry for you. Very ashamed. Very ashamed. Your leader will be successful. Until the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on that day is where you will, you will see that truly you were deceived. He will be successful. And many will be blinded. Will be blinded. Until the return of the Lord. You will be blinded. Like this. You better take yourself out. You better declare fasting on your own. You better seek the Lord on your own. In your bedroom. Set those books aside. Try and taste the Lord by yourself. Taste my words. Taste me. Taste me and see. Taste what I'm saying to you. You don't have to fight back to me. Just taste my words. Taste what I'm saying to you. Set that, those books aside. Set them aside. Say, no, not any more of this. Let me taste what this woman is saying. Let me taste what this lady is saying. Taste my words and see. Taste them. Try to dress modestly. Cover your body. Throw your makeup away. Cover your head. Because it's written in 1 Corinthians 11. Woman, you ought to, to cover your head. In prayer. In worship. When you prophesy. Taste this. Taste the words I'm saying to you. Try to be simple. Put those pens aside. Put them aside. Put them aside. Taste him. Taste me. Taste what I'm saying to you. Taste me. If you will not hear the Lord speak to you. If you will not. You say no God speaks to me. But taste me like this. Taste my words like this. Taste these words I'm saying to you like this. Then you will know the difference between the God you, you hear him from and the God I'm telling you about. You say there is one God. Everybody knows that. Even the demons know there is one God. But there's two spirits. There's two spirits. The spirit of light and darkness. The one of darkness comes and disguises himself like as if it's the light. 
but there is still sin. But the one of light. will come with the full image of God. Taste this. Try this yourself. Try it yourself. I do not know whether the youths, whether the people that used to see me in this church sit and think. Because I was a very devoted lady in prayer. Every time I was in the church praying, and I could not pray like anybody. I had my head covered. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I sheet and I think. If there could be, if, if there was one person can, that, that sat down and thought of all these things. Because when I go to church, I, I observe how people worship God. Because we are family. I have to see. Are you offering a full worship to God? When I see there is full worship, and then I also have joy in my heart. Because we're all honoring God together. I could sit and look. Now I could just see wickedness around me. Now instead of praying of, 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 of my own life, now I'm on to God. Look, people are praying, but they're on phone. But, 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 but. They're speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, but they're on the phone. I say, what is this? What is this? I watch, I look. Really? Serving two masters at a go on the phone at the same time you speaking in tongues. What are you talking? Speaking in tongues, you're talking what? What are you talking? On the phone. On the phone. You pull aside. What is this? What what? What? What is that? What is that? Tell me. You said no, we connected in the spirit. We're speaking, you know, mysteries. What? What mysteries? Why do you lie to yourself? Why do you lie to yourself? You cannot serve two masters at a go. You yourself, the, you have read brothers and sisters that taste the spirit. Do you have you, haven't you know, known how to taste the spirit? Haven't you know, known how to taste the spirit? Do you know a person can say to you, Jesus is Lord? But behind them, it's not the spirit of light. Do you not know that? Look in their deeds. Their deed, how do they live their lives? How do they live their lives? How is their life centered? How are their attitudes? Look in this. That's how you taste the spirit. He said, and you shall see them by their fruits. And you shall see them by their fruits. And you shall see them by their fruits. I warn you again, again. If you do not take yourself out of these churches, you are doomed for destruction. The scriptures are saying, not all that call me Lord, Lord, who enter my kingdom will fall on you on that day. It will fall on you. And you say, yes, I heard that lady talk about this, but I didn't listen. It's not your pastor to get you to the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit to get you to the Lord. In your house, at your comfort. Not with anybody praying for you. Not you being in any meeting. Not you being in any conference or whatever, what, whatsoever it is. Call it what? But just you and the Holy Spirit. You say, I have this Holy Spirit. Now go taste the Holy Spirit. Go taste the Holy Spirit. Without your pastor. Without your leader. Without your word. Turn this off. Taste these words I say to you. Taste them. You don't know this one is bringing division. Am I bringing division? Then let there be division. If it is for your sake to be saved, at least let there be division. So that I can divide you from this place of delusion. 
from this verse of Antichrist. From these false prophets. Let me divide you at least so that you may be saved. Let me divide you. You say to me she's very young. You say to yourself she's very young. What is she talking? She needs more wisdom, more, 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 more knowledge, more understanding about things of God. How old are you? How many years have you been in Christianity? But how, why have you failed to see that God does not, does not take pleasure in those that dress like the world? How long is it? Why haven't you failed to see that there should be a difference between a godly person, a Christian, a true Christian, and the person of the world? Why have you failed to see this? Why have you failed to see this? You say, no, we, we, we relate with God in different ways, in different ways. Why has God showed to me his, his holiness and not to you? Why? Because your hearts are colored. Your hearts are very far away from him. You say, Lord, 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 but your hearts are very far away from him. You are described in the Bible. When I read the Bible, I found people like you. They are there. And I'm not surprised to find people like you. Your hearts are very far away from God. But you say, God, God, God. Your hearts are very far away from the Lord. You say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You go to church, you pray, yes. You offer your tithings, yes. You participate in the, in, 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 in the ministry, in, in the evangelism, yes. But surely that day, if you do, if you do not, if you do not, <laughs> If you do not, if you do not sit down and say, God, Lord Jesus Christ, I want to know you. I want to have, I want to, I want to experience you now. Show me, show yourself to me, reveal yourself to me. I want to have an encounter with you. You will never enter the kingdom of the Lord. You will never, you will never see God. You will never see God. Do you know what is happening now? When he said, I am the true shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Because he knows the time is coming. The days are coming. Where many shepherds will come. And this is a time. How many pastors are you, you hearing out there? False friends, they're performing this. They put money in your account. They hear you, you walk, you do like, but can you not pray in your house and the Lord heals you? Did I not lay my hands on myself? Did I not? You say, I am young, but let me testify to you what I have seen in the Lord, what the Lord has done for me. Let me ashamed you. Let me ashamed you and your faith. Let me ashamed you and your faith. You say you're a Christian. You daily devote yourself in church. Sundays you're there. You say God checks the heart. You say no, it's okay to dress like this. It's okay to go to clubs. It's okay. Now you say I am young and I'm telling you these things. I'm warning you to get out of things that are leading you to hell. You say I am young. Let me tell you. Of the one that you say is your Lord, what he did. Let me tell you what he did. I myself laid my hand on my heart. Nobody was there with me in the bedroom. You say I'm now creating stories. If I am lying here, may the Lord strike me and my family. May he strike me if I'm lying. If I'm talking lies against him. May he strike me and my family that we may exist no more. May the wrath of God come on me and my family if I am lying in his name. I laid my hand on myself. Myself. I said, Lord, if you are truly Jesus Christ, if truly you are the son of God, and if truly you resurrected, and if you're still, you're still there sitting on the throne, and if you can still heal, I have a heart problem. 
I traveled from Uganda to South Africa. I need healing. But in the hospital, they failed me. They cannot treat me. I've tried many people to lay hands on me and heal me, but they failed. And you're the last hope I have. Now, if you can see my pain, if you feel my pain, can you heal me or show me? Just the way people testify, I also want to testify. May you heal my heart. And he blew in my heart like a cold breeze inside, inside. Nobody was there in the bedroom. Nobody was there in my room. Nobody was there with me, but just me and the Holy Spirit. The one that you say, yes, I have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. Why? But why can he not, not, not tell you that you cannot dress like that? You walk, you show your bums out. You, your bums are moving like this. A man out there, a man is looking at you and he's lusty. You do not know who is looking at you. Many people out there are looking. And they look how your bums are moving like this. Moving like this. Moving like this. Like, oh, I wish I could have it. That person is already lasting. And you are the cause of that. And you will be blamed for the destruction of that person. You say, no, but why did I look? Do you not know? Do you not know? That men are so weak. Do you not know that? Do you not know that? You all know those things. But then why are you selfish? Why do you not want men to also be righteous? That's why you see God puts these commands. It's not that God is selfish. But these commands are there for you and me and our brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, our brothers also as well. That they may also be righteous before God. Not to have lust in them all the time. No, but there's a lot of women passing here. I cannot resist. I cannot do it. I cannot look. And, you know. That's why you see he says, dress. You have to dress modestly. That's why you see he wants us to dress like this. To cover our bodies. He puts his commands here for us. So that we may live in peace with everybody. In peace with everybody. To live in peace with everybody. Cover your body. Cover your body. It's a temple of the Lord. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will hate this world. You would not desire to be around people that are in, 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 in happiness, in joy. You will not. All your days will be in mourning. All your days will be in mourning because of the wickedness that you see. It's the spirit that is crying. It's not you. It's the spirit that lead, lives inside of you that is crying because it is clean. It's, un, it's, not, it's, not, un, it's, it's not unclean, but it is clean. So it looks and sees, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. That's how you know the Spirit of the Lord is in you. That's how you know. But if you're able to see how people are drinking, going to clubs, are having the changing patterns of partners, committing adultery, lusting, you know, pride. And you see these things and you also participating in it. They're slandering. They are malicing. You're also participating in all these things. And uh-uh. There is no spirit of God there. There is no. You lie to yourself. There is nothing. There is nothing. It will cry inside there. It will cry in your, in your spirit. It will cry inside of you. It will cry. When you see this evil, that one stealing from one another, that one kill, killing one, one another, hating that one, you will cry and say, Lord, have mercy on this person. Listening, you hear a secular music. 
You say, oh no, your ears, you feel like you want to block them, you want to close them, you want to tighten them, you want to, it pierces inside of your spirit, inside, because it, they, they, the light is inside it. The light is inside it. You don't want to hear secular music. You just want to hear that glorious, that holy worshiping music, the worship that pleases God. Because your spirit cries out to God, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Holy Father, Holy Father. And that's what the angels do every day, each and every day. Worshipping God with different kinds of songs every time. When you're able to see this, then you know the Spirit of God is with you. You're in good times with the Lord. When you spend most of the time on the phone and the TV on what? It will cry. No. You've spent a lot. Of, I've spent a lot of time on the phone and spent a lot of time on the TV. I've spent a lot of time talking to these people on WhatsApp, chatting. And with, no, I cannot be there. I cannot be on Instagram. I can't be on Facebook. I cannot be on TikTok. I cannot be on Snapchat. I can't be here. No, no. I have to spend this time before the Lord. I've worked too much. I have to sit before God and talk to Him. I want to see it for how many hours? One hour? Maybe 30 minutes? How many? Two hours or what? Oh. Oh, I need to sit before the Lord. No. That the Spirit of the Lord, the light is in you. The light is in you. Many of you have preached you and say, no, when you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord, you're already in the light. It's a lie. It's a lie. That is the, the beginning of it. There you have received your faith. You just received your faith. It's now you to take a step. Walk. Walk. You will walk and fall, but you must keep on walking. Just where you see a child start crawling and starts to stand. Stand and walk and fall. And they stand again. Run, 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 fall. Stand again. And then they can now run, run faster. That is it. The story of Christianity. Okay. Peace be upon you all and see you again as the Lord calls me here to have a word with you. Take heed to what I've said to you. In your worship, raise your hands up for the Lord. Honor him. Honor him. Be on your knees. Be on your knees. Remember to anoint your heads. Anoint your door. Anoint your window. Say, may the anointing of the Lord be upon my door in the name of Jesus Christ. May the anointing of the Lord be upon my window in the name of Jesus Christ. And plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Just say that. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ all over my whole house in the name of Jesus. You plead like that. You plead. You say like that. Before you pray, anoint your head. Go on your knees. Go on your knees. We break our fast at 6 o'clock. After 6 is when you can eat. For those that are living on that that are, are, are fasting with the normal bread and warm water, twelve o'clock. You can eat your bread and six o'clock. And do not eat like you've been missing this. This is also how we cheat the Lord. Because you're not it's it's like as if they, you're just being forced to do this. You've been missing food. Don't show that to God. Don't do that to God. Give what belongs to the body to the body and to God to God. Okay? All right. And you, you all know that at 12, 12 a.m., that's the beginning of the new day. You know, you all know that we always before the Lord thanking Him for a new day, for a new day. In giving this day to him pray for the world pray for the for those in the hospital pray for those in the prison pray for the government pray whatever the way in whichever way the Spirit of the Lord will lead you this is how you spend quality time before the Lord okay this is how you spend quality time before the Lord okay that was such an honor to be before you 
And the Lord is expecting you to heed to what I have said to you. For this is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. And here it's, it's now 3 a.m. in the morning and I am awake to record to you. Just as the way the Spirit of the Lord asked me. May the peace of the Lord be upon you all. And you all know that I love you because you love the Lord. Send me emails, talk to me of how everything is doing. My emails are always down in the, in the description button, so you can always check there. Talk to me about anything. Do not do something because everybody is doing it. But do it because your heart is at peace to do it. Bye.